And so patch 4.4 live stream has just ended and once again lantern right is finally back with us i believe this is actually the fourth lantern right we get to experience i can't believe time is flies so fast guys we're already moving into the fourth years of genshin impact being here with us and yes as always lantern right is one of my most favorite events of the year because as you have seen from the live stream whole universe actually dedicates a lot of passion towards creating lantern rights event especially with this time around we have a new area unlocked in leeways as well which have been quite some time but Chen Yu Valley if I remember the name correctly is absolutely stunning and definitely can't wait to sink my tooth into exploring these parts of the area but as usual guys whenever a patch comes the most important thing is definitely the character that comes along with it and oh my are the five star character this time around spicy which is usual guys this video is dedicated into looking into these characters specifically and give my personal advice in terms of which character is best for you to be choosing at this point in time. Primo Gems has always been the most troubling grinding to get in Genshin Impact. You've just managed to pull for your favorite character, now you want to get their weapons and constellation but no Primos. What do you do now? Well of course we tend to swipe our cards but that can get a little bit expensive doesn't it? But thanks to Loot Bar we have an even better way of topping up for Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail that's absolutely safe secure transaction with lower pricing discount. Not only that they have very fast delivery in only a couple of minutes of waiting and a very much trustworthy service with over a hundred thousand orders and the majority of the reviews being five stars. To demonstrate to you how trustworthy the service is as usual for the past months I've been topping up through Loot Bar and the main reason why they're very secured is that you can top up by using your UID. Yes, no password or account lockins details required. I'll be topping up with the largest pack in Genshin Impact. Afterward, you just pay using your card as usual and that is pretty much it. Very simple process. Now you just wait for a few minutes and the Primo Gems will be directly top up into your account. Now on Loot Bar, you can also have the option to top up multiple times in a row, like from 2 to 10 times in one payment. And since the site has that discount percentage off, the higher you recharge, the more money you will be able to save. You can, for example, purchase a 6480 Primo Gems Genesis Crystal times 4 times, and that goes for only $295, which if you do the math, it would save you nearly $100 compared to normal Genshin top up. Right now on Loot Bar, they're holding an event where you can buy Walkins at only $2. Yes, that's basically 60% off. So if you're someone who's planning to go for longer savings or pulling for Xion Yun as well as any of the patch 4.4 reruns, this is a very good chance for you to grab a lot of walk-in stackings. Do keep in mind though is this is only available for the first 200 participants. So guys, check out Loot Bar from my link in the description if you're someone who usually tops up as it is a very secured place and can save you a lot of money topping up. Plus, don't miss out on this walk-in discount event guys. Now as usual how the video will usually go is I will be looking a little bit in depth into some of these characters looking into basically their pros and cons so that you have pretty much a refresh idea of what these characters do and of course if it's a new character like Xian Yun you have a bit more understanding about the character before you actually go ahead and decide right which leads us directly towards Xian Yun oh my god on the most awaited character Cloud Retainer we finally get to play in her human form I know that many of you you are looking forward to her and would have saved up for Xian Yun at this point in time but for those of you who are on the fence and is wondering what she basically does it's exactly what we'll be discussing right here. So as you might have seen from the live stream you may have gotten the gist of what Xian Yun is able to do but yes she's the very first character to open up a new gameplay mechanic in Genshin Impact and that goes to plunging attack. While before we only have a very selected few characters who have apps 
access to plunging gameplay like Shao or if you were familiar with the Deluxe Dragon's track. But now with the introduction of Xian Yun, every single character in Genshin will now be able to utilize plunging attack to almost 100% of their capability. Well, in terms of how viable for every character it actually is, that will still be the question mark we have to wait until Xian Yun actually arrives for us to officially test her out. But on top of allowing all the characters to have plunging ability, she does buff their plunging damage as well, which is really really nice, especially for those characters who focuses primarily on plunging attack, especially you know like Xiao or a very new 4 star character Garmin. Now I won't be able to go too much in depth into Xiang Yun's specific skill and kit here in this video, but I will leave that for another. So basically in similar understanding of Xiang Yun for you would be she's kind of like an updated version of Jin where she has access to very good healing because while apparently she would be able to heal you anywhere on the field unlike Jin where it's only affected within her field circle, very easy for Xiang Yun to be triggering swirl reaction for you so for peace VV Shred is really good built on Xian Yun. Plus all of the new mechanic of plunging she's opened up for your team comps is a really nice addition to the game. However, from my personal perspective guys, he is what I currently see whenever you are considering for Xian Yun. Is that well, yes, of course she does allow every character to have plunging available for them, but that obviously doesn't mean that she will be a character that is slotted on every single team. Because because while each and different character in Genshin currently most likely already have access to some of their few best teams, so if you decide to pull for Xian Yun, many of the time she will be kind of in a competitive position of you considering to swap out a very good character on your already built teams in order for Xian Yun to be slotted in. Therefore, from what I am seeing Xian Yun is, it's more preferably being used as an updated character for those who focuses on plunging attack primarily. And and of course that goes to Xiao. Yes, if you are a Xiao main and a Xiao user, you definitely would want to pull for Xian Yun. That is a guaranteed fact. If you are interested to play for Garming, then yes, Xian Yun is definitely a character for his team as well. Or another interesting consideration would be for those characters who currently have very high plunging attack multiplier. And yes, that goes to D Look, who currently have one of the highest plunging attack multiplier in the games or guess who is on the list as well and yes guys that goes to Hu Tao as well she also have very good plunging multiplier but on top of that if you do recognize then her plunging multiplier actually is higher than her charge attack yes what do you know now new gameplay mechanic for Hu Tao changing from charge attack meta into plunging attack Hu Tao mostly from now on especially if you are at a C0 Hu Tao plunging does not consume your stamina but charge attack do so you can definitely use Sun Yun on Hu Tao teams and that opens up a little bit more kind of like a buff toward Hu Tao. Now I haven't really go too depth into which character have really high plunging multiplier to be listing out everything for you but those are some of the character I currently have on top of my mind regarding if you are considering Sun Yun in terms of a pooling factor if you are someone who focuses on the meta. But overall guys I already really love of her designs and skills and kits opens up a whole variety of team comps for me to build around so yeah definitely i will be pulling for Xian Yun. however this is a thing that you have to consider depending on your account because yes Xian Yun is actually kind of more of a niche buffer currently moving on we have our lovely nahida well guys uh <laughs> what more do i have to say about nahida right first of all she hasn't been back for quite some time i believe that was around april or May last year but the main fact is that we just can't deny Nahida is one of if not still the best Dendro character in the game right now not to mention her sub DPS capability basically works on every single Dendro team there is currently. The power of Nahida in team comps building is just so good that guys if you haven't already have Nahida or if you're just still a casual player 
Nahida is still basically kind of like a pool for you almost all the time. She's just that, that good. For yes, if you want to play her on field as a driver and more of a dendro applicator, then yes, she can definitely be on field, but her power comes from her sub DPS capability. Just having her there setting up her E skill, not to mention the AoE capability that Nahida has, is just too, too good. Even if you are a newer player, you don't really have much character to be building a team around Nahida, that's still fine because as you play down the line, you would be able to have the correct character to build her team along with. Because yes, if we have looked at it, it has already been around 10 months ago, that was the last rerun banner of Nahida, so who knows when she's gonna be back after this. All I know is that it's gonna be a pretty long waiting time once again, not to mention how many new characters are gonna be coming right after this. Now, of course, I did say that Nahida is a very much valuable character that you want on almost all of your accounts however there are a bit of a requirement whenever it comes to her building and requires some specific character in order for her to do pretty well and while yes Nahida is a character that depends heavily on dendro reactions so she's a character that would really love to be on hyper bloom or aggravate teams and those teams generally wants you to have at least a kuki shinobu and a singjo and while well, since Nahida is going to be coming out in Lantern Rack Events banner, if you haven't already have a Singcho, then yes, this is also a perfect time to grab a Singcho if you are pulling for Nahida's team. So yes, overall, this is kind of like a perfect time for you to go for Nahida if you haven't already have her. Overall, guys, Nahida does not have much of a downside apart from you investing into some of her character on a specific team for her to do absolutely well. So yes, she is just that valuable. Moving on, we have our lovely Yai Miko. She also haven't been back for quite a while. Now, the thing with Yai Miko is that she tends to be compared a lot to what Fischl, especially if you already have a C6 Fischl on your account. However, here's the thing about Yai Miko and Fischl is that generally we don't always compare them together, but more about how these characters actually works with each other. Because definitely Yai Miko and Fischl is one of a very good team comps for you guys to build around. Yes, Yai Fish is a thing and especially when you're paired that up in terms of an aggravate team build around Yai Fish, that team is one of the best Genshin Impact team in the game. For Yai Miko is a character that works absolutely amazing especially in aggravate team comps. So definitely Yai Miko value is still there not to mention guys her sub DPS level is also pretty good with a hundred percent uptime. Not to mention if you are a fan of Yai Miko like I am if you've been following me for some time you know that I have a C4 Yai Miko and while yes C4 Yai Miko sub DPS level is some of the best we have in the game and I basically have my Yai Miko on mostly every single main Kenshin team that I have. So especially if you are someone who already have Nahida on your account then Yai Miko is also a very good option if you are looking to upgrade your Nahida teams in terms of aggravate gameplay. However it also comes down to your priority checklist as well for yes if you for example already have a c6 visual and yeah miko is not a priority for you right now because as we've known we already got some very good fontaine character released before and they might be having their reruns banner a little bit a few patches away then yeah you can also consider that and hold on to your primo gems for the time being and then our other rerun character is our shao what a time for shao to return of course definitely it makes sense because xian yun the perfect character for Xiao is right here. Otherwise, while well, if they release Xian Yun and Xiao is nowhere to be seen, I believe that not many of us would be pulling for Xian Yun at this point in time. So yeah, definitely Xiao here is going to make sense. Now, I would say that Xiao DPS level is still pretty good, guys. If you have gone through some of the best teams I have recommended in this video, if you haven't already, do check it out after this as it is a very good video for you to have a watch. I have also considered Xiao teams 
as well especially after Xian Yun is going to be arriving and while if you do have a C6 Farzan on Xiao's team Xiao is definitely going to be having a considerable buff for him which is pretty nice considering how fun his gameplay mechanic actually is one of the few dedicated plunging attack character we have in the game currently so that's definitely a thing now that is only for those of you who already have Xiao however if you have not got Xiao and is considering for him I would say that he's definitely going to be more of a preference character because while well, unless you really like Xiao investing into him at this point in time probably not going to be the wisest idea considering yes I've just mentioned how many good Fontaine characters have been released and as you would have seen Xiao team in order for it to be good is very expensive but we are considering Xian Yu who is just right before Xiao and yes you also would want to consider a Farazan at least at a C2 level and I'm not sure if Hoyoverse is going to do Xiao justice of giving Farazan on his banner because while many of the time Farazan is a character that have been appearing on Wanderer's banner mostly but while I'm sure Farazan should be on Xiao's banner this time around but that doesn't take away the fact that Xiao team is pretty much very expensive and guys if you were to take all of the Prima gems to pull for you know Xian Yun, Xiao is weapon trying to get Farzan reinvest that you know for example a C1 New Villet, a C2 Furina or you know even a C2 Nahida those characters are gonna do a lot for your account so yes unless you prefer Xiao that is a huge consideration on your part if you haven't already have Xiao then definitely it is not worthwhile for you to be pulling Xiao at this point in time so those guys would be my saying on some of the most important notes towards the character at this point in time i hope that have been quite refreshing in terms of what the characters are able to do now of course i've already discussed a little bit on pooling priority before but i'll personally give my advice in terms of pooling priority for the five star character who are going to be appearing in patch 4.4 currently if you have already decided to be using your primo gems to pool in patch 4.4 anyway and so the top priority guys if you haven't got any of the five star character definitely go to Nahida just too too valuable for you to pass on because Nahida is just so so good however this time around the priority list is also in a little bit of a funny situation because yes of Xiao and Xian Yun but as I have mentioned Xian Yun is a character that is dedicated toward Xiao so if you are a Xiao main then Xian Yun is actually more of a consideration instead of Nahida but if you are not going for Xiao then Xian Yun's pooling value is also most likely not going to be there unless you really prefer to pull for her and then Yaimiko's priority would definitely shoot up because yes Yaimiko and Nahida on the same team oh my god if you're able to pull for them definitely will make up one of the best team we have in Genshin Impact so yeah it's interesting to see how the banners are currently being laid out because we have Xian Yun and Nahida being on the first phase and Yaimiko and Xiao being on the second kind of like how yours is drawing you two very specific routes to go at this point in time it's kind of like if you're going for Xian Yun you're most likely going to be pulling over Xiao and if you're going for Nahida you're most likely going to be getting Yaimiko so those are kind of like the priority you want to look into at this point in time but yes it definitely depends and vary from each of your different accounts so guys that should be everything I have to say regarding some of the five star character that will be appearing on patch 4.4 if you do have any question just leave it down in the comments sections and i or some other lovely genshin impact player will get to you there i hope that the video was very valuable and helpful to you now guys i just made a very in-depth video discussing some of the best team we currently have in genshin impact so if you haven't already checked out the video be sure to have a watch because i'm sure it will help you in terms of deciding which specific five star character to be on your pooling list next if you are new to the channel guys don't forget to subscribe i really appreciate you guys sticking with me till this part of the video guys and with that i wish you a super day and i will catch you on my next video.